Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, My Legion Adventure. And this is, we're there, folks. We got there. This is it. We are at uh, Adventure Comics number 300, the first issue that is actually a Legion of Superheroes story, and not a story, someone else's story, where they just appear. We are at the first of the Tales of the Legion of Superheroes. But we're going to do a little, before we get to the comic, I want to kind of put us where we're at in this history of the Legion. I'm gonna, we have a sizable number of members have all been introduced. One will be, one more will join the team in this episode. But I wanna go through who is a Legionnaire at this point. So let me go. Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad, Dual Damsel, Phantom Girl, Chameleon Boy, Invisible Kid, Colossal Boy, Star Boy, Supergirl, Brainiac 5, Shrinking Violet, Superboy, Sun Boy, Bouncing Boy, and Ultra Boy. So, that is the current lineup. The lead leader is still Cosmic Boy. Um, Superboy and Supergirl are both um, members, active members at this point. Um, we see them together a little later. But let's get into this comic and let me tell you the, the details and then I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, you ready? Let's go, hold on, let me get to that page in my index so I can read it to you. Adventure Comics, cover date September 1962. Cover credits, artist Kurt Swan, penciler George Klein, inker, letter Irish Shap. The um, first story in this comic is the super planet of Clark Kent and Lana Lang. It is not a Legion story, but it is um, a George Pap Superboy story. So it's pro I've liked it. I've read it before. Uh, in the archive, all I get is this feature, the second story, which is a 12-page Legion story called The Face Behind the Lead Mask. Editor Plotter, Mort Weisinger. Plotter scripter, Jerry Siegel. Pencil, Pencilers inkers, Joe Forte and Al Plastino. Page 4 plus Superboy with Luther faces. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't realize that when reading it. Letter of Milton Snappin. Featured characters, Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, Superboy, and Sun Boy. Other Legionnaires who make appearances. Where is that list? Okay, Bouncing Boy, Brainiac 5, Chameleon Boy, Colossal Boy, Phantom Girl, Shrinking Violet, Star Boy, Super Girl, Triple Crew. They do not appear. I'm reading the wrong list. Um... <laughs> There are all the those are the active members of this story, but all of them do appear. Uh, let me hold on. On the first page of the story, you have Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad, Sun Boy, Command Boy, Bouncing Boy, Shrinking Violet, Invisible Kid, Superboy. But the active participants in the story are Superboy, um, Lightning Lad, Sun Boy, Cosmic Boy, and Saturn Girl. All right, so. That's, it's good. It's got nice art. I really like Joe Forte. I think I've said that before. Uh, I look forward to this. He does a real long stretch of these. Um, I like to break the Silver Age in half, um, into parts, not half, but this it, to me is the Forte era uh, because he does it for a long time and it's great. And then he's replaced by Swan. I, I, we're going we're gonna to go on that journey together because I don't remember it a lot and I, I'm really not reading ahead. Um, well, I read each issue a couple times uh, about four days before I record to get it back in my brain. Um, let me give you the synopsis and then I want to talk about the cover because the cover is important. Alright. During a routine meeting, the Legionnaires suddenly begin losing control over their powers. Even Superboy, whom they've summoned from the future, cannot discover the cause of their problem. After the worldwide police threaten to banish them from Earth, a lead masked villain calling himself Eluthro, Earthlo, appears and takes credit for their predicament. Because Earthlo possesses a device that controls their powers, the heroes find themselves unable to stop him until Saturn Girl and Superboy release Monel from the Phantom Zone, where he has been for a thousand years. After she pri provides him with the serum XY minus 4, a temporary lead poisoning antidote, Monel defeats Ortho, who turns out to be a robot set into the future with, from Superboy's time by a vengeful Lex Luthor. After the battle, Monel must return to the Phantom Zone, but only after being voted into the Legion. Yes, 
a new issue, a new member, and it's great. This is a fun, fun, fun comic. Um, it is it is a comic I, w I have never owned a copy of it. Uh, it is, I would, if I could find a reasonably priced one, buy it and slab it. And then uh, frame it, uh, frame it or display it because of the cover. Uh, the cover is, uh, which I will post up, is it's got a blue banner um, on the top with a red, yellow box with red lettering, Adventure Comics, 12 cents, Comic Code of Pride, and then a banner below that in white featuring Superboy in Tales of the Legion of Superheroes. Not only do they get a, a, a starring spot in the book, they get the cover. And then it is, everybody, you've probably seen, it's got a middle panel, long rectangular one with Superboy flying above the Legion Clubhouse with a little red box that says, by popular demand, Mono leaves the Phantom Zone and joins the Legion. And then um, going clockwise from left top to right top, uh, you have these boxes, one with Sun Boy, one with Lightning Lad, then with Saturn Girl, and then with Triplicate Girl, then with Cosmic Boy, and then mon in the Phantom Zone. I love this cover. I, I cannot tell you how much I love this cover. It is something that I've always wanted to own a copy of. It is an iconic comic book. It is so important to Legion as a Legion fan that this is when they had their first series. This is Legion Volume 1. This is it. Okay? This is Volume 1. Um, Actions Volume 2. Superboy is Volume 3. And then so as they break up. That's how I divide them. And this is amazing. It's a fun 12-page story. It's silly. I love that Luther, Luther just getting out of the reformatory has enough werewall and resources to create a robot with hate disks in it and send it into the future with a time ray. Corny, corny, and cornier, and I love it. I absolutely love it. It is a lot of fun. It is pure, pure Silver Age fun. Um, there's a slow build through these where you get to know these characters and it becomes that there because that's one thing I've said. I think I've said this before. I love Legion because they, especially up through the the first reboot, they all their life, they all this stuff took time. Everything happened. It it shaped the characters. The characters changed in slow incrementals. It wasn't drastic, but you know, if they were in love, there was that character and there was things. So there was connections, and every character had a personality. And it's just great. And this is the beginning of it. I love it. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, it's just there's a lot of stuff going on in it. Um, Luther's in it. Um, the Worldwide Police, which is the precursor for the Science Police, which will become a big part of uh, Legion lore. Um, uh, and they're using, okay, the, they can fly, I'll fly. But this time instead of rocket packs, it's anti-gravity belts, and eventually they will get their flight rings. All this stuff is beginning. It's beginning here, and it is just great. Uh, I read it in um, the archives, but online, if you read this uh, on Infinite DC, you also get the secret origin of B Bouncing Boy, which is not in this comic, which is in 301. But three, the 30, it's not 301's not shown as available. But you're getting it because they jump around. Uh, they have, I think it's. This, this with the two stories, and then 302, 303, they don't have it, and 304 is the next one, which is a comic I had. I think it was the closest issue in that I got to um, 300 when they started. I had a lot of these, though. At one point, I had a pretty good run of the Silver Age, um, and some really neat issues. I mean, some really good, special comics. Um, to be honest, I've been looking at, and I've been good, because it's good that I not spend money, but uh, there's a very beat-up copy of... 304, I think it's 304, the first appearance of Element Lad, and I've never owned it. And Element Lad is the, in, in this Legion, from here to uh, the reboot, Lee, he's my guy. I kind of like the, the, the Element Lad in uh, the reboot, and I haven't, I haven't made up my mind in the three boot yet, but we'll get there. I know I don't like him in the Bendis one, but they've not used him, so it's, it's okay but he looks like Brother Power of the Geek. 
they need to do something with them or not do something with them, I, you know, before I make a judgment. But I'm being kind of judgy, so I don't know. He's my guy. And, you know, it's just I feel attached to him, and I want a good version of Element Lad. Every time they fix this thing, they change this thing, not fix, change this team. You know, I'm always hoping for someone who is as cool as um, the original. And the original was amazing, especially during Levitt's Giffinier. I mean, they really loved that character. So that's it for 300. I mean, I can't, you know, I could break down panel by panel how much I love it, but it's a 12-page story. Go find it. Read it. It's amazing. Um, so, folks, um, coming up in two days will be episode one of my read-through of The Defenders. I have not thought of a title, um, but I got an idea, and I will make my decision when I type it in or I say it in the recording uh, on Thursday. So, folks, until then, you all be safe, you be smart, and you read some comic books. Read this comic book. Come on.